If I were to buy a new car, I would insist on the following nine safety features. An effective crumple zone, pretension and load limiter seat belts, airbags and a stable body shell, anti-brake locking system, ABS, and electronic stability control, ESC, a reverse camera and autonomous emergency braking, AEB. Some of these features are mandatory or standard items in first world countries, but in in third world countries, they are optional extras. Go figure. Crumple zones. To increase the likelihood of you walking away from a crash, the impact of the accident must be extended over as long a time period as possible and the forces on your body must be reduced as much as possible. So crumple zones dissipate the force of the crash by extending the time that it takes for the impact to reach the cabin and by spreading the force over as large an area as possible. Every vehicle for the, like their frontal crashes goes from 40 miles an hour to zero when it hits the barrier. And so it's a question of how can we cushion that impact so that people can survive those crashes. It's really essential that we be able to absorb that energy so that energy doesn't get absorbed by you as the person riding in the car. The front of the vehicle is an area where we don't care what happens. This car is going to be totaled no matter what. So uh, let's absorb all the energy up there. Let's destroy as much as possible so that we keep this area where the people are sitting intact. 25% overlap on this car comes right outside of that frame rail. It just skirts the very edge of it, which means that it can't do the job of absorbing all that energy. We need to rely on other structures in the car. And what manufacturers typically do is look at these upper structures, the wheel itself, can be used to absorb some energy. So a shattering that, it really absorbs a whole chunk of the energy that's, that's occurring. And then also strengthening this area here where we transition from that front of the vehicle to the occupant compartment. Seatbelt pretensioner and force limiter. Wearing a seatbelt can reduce the risk of death in a car crash by 45% and the risk of serious injury by 50%. In modern vehicles, they work together with airbags, increasing their effectiveness even further. We want to make sure that the person inside the car stays coupled to the car and doesn't strike the things within the car as the car is slowing down, but the person is not. And that's really where seat belts and airbags come into play. Engineers can figure out how to decelerate the car and design the car so that it's survivable, but it needs you to be coupled to that car in order to provide the most protection. Modern seat belts come with pre-tensioners and load limiters. The pre-tensioners tightens up the seat belts, pulling the occupants into the, their seats when the car sensors pick up that a crash is about to happen. Load limiters gradually releases the seatbelt, allowing the force and time of impact to be spread over a longer time period. Force limiters come into play when seatbelt pressures applied to the occupant reach a predetermined level. At that point, the limiter allows the belt to extend to help reduce the impact on the occupant's chest. In a serious collision where the SRS airbag may deploy, the pretensioner activates with the airbag after a signal is received from the SRS sensor assembly. After deployment, the force limiter also comes into play as an added method of protection, reducing the load applied by the seat belt to the occupant's chest. Combined, these systems help the front airbag deploy more effectively during a frontal collision. Airbags versus a stable body shell integrity. While more airbags are usually preferred than fewer, no amount of airbags is going to save you if the car's body does not offer you substantial protection. This is one of the reasons why you must make sure that your car has a stable body shell as rated by your regional new car assessment program, NCAP. As an example of this, Global NCAP awarded the Kaya Karens with six airbags, only three stars, while the Mahindra XU Thieves 700 with two airbags was awarded five stars. The difference being that the Kia's body shell integrity was rated as being unstable, which increased the likelihood of serious injuries in a crash, while the Mahindra's body shell was rated as stable. If you are living in a third world country where safety features are considered as optional extras, Choose as many airbags as possible and, if you must choose, pick according to occupants, the type of accidents that are most prevalent in your area, and the risk posed by accidents as shown by your regional NCAP. 
I would definitely want as much head and chest protection as possible. However, since body shell integrity is critical for crash safety, choose a vehicle with a stable body shell integrity and as many airbags as possible. ABS and ESC. In most first world countries, cars must have anti-lock braking systems, ABS, and electronic stability control, ESC. ABS prevents wheel lockup during hard braking, allowing the driver to maintain steering control. It significantly reduces risk of skidding and improves braking performance. ESC detects and corrects loss of traction by braking individual wheels and adjusting engine power. In this way, it helps to prevent rollovers and loss of control during sudden maneuvers. In the US, they estimate that one-third of fatal accidents could be prevented by ESC, and that since its introduction in Europe, it saved approximately 15,000 lives. Unfortunately, in third-world countries, some new vehicles are still being sold without ESC. Reverse Camera Reversing cameras provide drivers with a clear view of what's behind their vehicle. This increased visibility helps avoid collisions with obstacles, pedestrians, or other vehicles. Despite low reversing speeds, a significant percentage of accidents occur during this maneuver. It is estimated that a combination of rear-view cameras and sensors with automatic braking when reversing could cut reverse crashes by 78%. Autonomous Emergency Braking AEB, automatically applies the brakes when it detects an imminent collision. It is designed to prevent or mitigate accidents by acting independently of the driver. The system intervenes only in critical situations, aiming to avoid the accident by applying the brakes. The purpose is to decelerate the vehicle, either avoiding the collision altogether or minimizing its impact. Autonomous Emergency Braking AEB, detects objects in your vehicle's path and alerts you to an imminent crash with warning tones and visual alerts on the dashboard. AEB will also apply the brakes automatically if the situation becomes critical and the driver does not respond. There are four main types of AEB systems on the market. AEB car-to-car -car systems use sensors to detect the presence of a potential hazard in front of the vehicle. Vulnerable road user AEB can detect other road users like cyclists, pedestrians and motorcyclists to avoid collisions. Junction Assist AEB operates to prevent collisions when a vehicle is turning across an intersection. Backover AEB detects pedestrians and vehicles while the car is in reverse to prevent a backover collision. Advanced technologies such as autonomous emergency braking can help you avoid or reduce the impacts of a crash.